Hi everyone and welcome back to LearnNeuroRadiology.com. Today we're going to do the first of seven cases that go along with our brain imaging capstone course. So here we are, let's dive right into case number one. Now if you want to follow along these cases on your own, you're going to want to go to the course website. You can get to that by going to LearnNeuroRadiology.com slash brain capstone or bit.ly slash brain capstone. That's going to take you to the same place. We'll drop the links in the description down below so you can check those out uh, if you want to get to those. Uh, but this is how you're going to get to all the cases uh, that are the interactive cases for this part of the course. Case one is going to be an 84-year-old woman with hypertension. She has altered mental status, slurred speech, left-sided hemiplegia, and a right-sided gaze pulse. Let's just dive right into this case. So to get to this case, we've gone to LearnNeuroRadiology.com. We found the Brain Capstone course. If you're on the main page, you can get to the course by choosing courses here, going down to where it says Brain Imaging here. That'll take you to the course. But you should be on this page that says Brain Imaging Capstone course. If you haven't seen the earlier videos, you're able to check those out like along the way. You can click along those, check out some of the explanation videos. But we're going to go straight down here to where it says Case 1. That's our 83-year-old woman with hypertension. We're going to click on the head CT, CTA. So we can take a look at the images on this case. Now here the CT has come up here. We've got a non-contrast CT up here in the uh, left upper corner here. We're going to double click on that just to make it a little bigger so we can kind of see what's going on. And when I start looking at a head CT, I start at the bottom. I look at the cerebellar hemispheres, the brain stem, looking for symmetry, any areas where uh, it doesn't quite, doesn't quite make sense. I'll window this a little bit tighter here so we can see. First thing I notice is an abnormality in the temporal pole here. Seems a little bit too hypodense. Looks like the sylvian fissure is a little bit of face there. I'm not seeing it quite as well as I do on the other side. And sure enough, as I come up a little higher, I'm seeing areas where the cortex and subcortical white matter are a little bit too hypodense, so they're too dark. And we've lost gray-white differentiation in the insula, inferior frontal lobe there, a bigger area of central ischemia there that's kind of as it comes down and you see that's involving like much of the MCA territory there so got lots of gray-white differentiation there which is uh which you can see you see a little bit of involvement of the parietal lobe as you come up again all in the MCA territory now if we want to go back we can see this actually this case actually has a CT angiogram to go along with it we're going to start a little bit lower here look at our CT angiogram kind of follow the internal carotids here you can tell a little bit of the difference, like how much brighter it is on the left. Maybe there's a little bit of slow or poor filling on the right. Kind of makes sense in the area of, uh, or in the realm of ischemia and poor flow to that right side. Similarly, seeing the cavernous carotid artery here. Uh, again, it looks a little bit less filled on that right side. As you come up here superiorly, you get to the carotid terminus. You'll notice the left carotid terminus is normal, bifurcates into an ACA and an MCA there. And the right carotid terminus, sort of truncates abruptly like right there at the bifurcation the poor filling of that ACA there really no filling of an MCA on that on that right side so that goes along with this being a right sort of ICA occlusion and MCA occlusion with a right MCA infarct now we can go back and uh, we can check out this case also has an MRI we're going to pull that up here here we have a diffusion ADC layer and post contrast imaging from an MRI in the same patient here you can see uh, this has an area of diffusion abnormality that's covering much of that area that we were seeing that was abnormal on the CT. Very bright on diffusion, involving the inferior frontal lobe, basal ganglia on that side. Again, all in the MCA distribution. Here's what it looks like on ADC. So we just see it's a very dark there, consistent with that being an infarct. Here on flare, you see much of the area is involved, anterior temporal pole, insula, right frontal and parietal lobes and uh, basal ganglia there. So that whole area is infarcted. Now this is a little bit later after the patient presented with their symptoms. You can see enhancement there. I'll blow this up just to make it a little bit bigger here. You can see the enhancement here along the gyri, kind of gyriform enhancement that you see from cortical necrosis, which happens in the days to weeks after an infarct, a little bit of enhancement of the basal ganglia there. That's typically what you can see on an MRI. So let's just come back and review some of the key findings. Here you have the CT, uh, you have the brain here, you see that area of ischemia and the right MCA distribution. Here you see some of the advantages of windowing it a little bit more harshly in the brain window, for instance. You can see that area of ischemia. Again, following a vascular territory, which, which is very important, tells you you're looking at a vascular pathology. 
a little bit of effacement of that right lateral ventricle there, meaning you have a little bit, a little bit of swelling. Uh, I didn't have this in the interactive portion, but you see on coronal and sagittal, you see again, areas of loss of gray-white differentiation, areas of ischemia there in that right MCA territory. So here you're dealing with a right MCA infarct. This just summarizes the findings that we saw there. Hypodensity, loss of gray-white differentiation, a little bit of social effacement, and the right lateral ventricle being a little bit effaced. No hemorrhagic conversion really in this case. Now here just highlights a little bit of those findings with arrows so you can sort of see them a little better. On the CTA, you see truncation of that MCA with really no MCA on this MIP here. So you can see there's a collusion of that right, uh, right eye carotid terminus and MCA there. On the MRI, it just confirms the findings that you saw. We saw bright diffusion in the MCA distribution uh, here, dark on ADC and bright on flare. Very characteristic of, uh, of an MCA infarct. And on the post contrast, we see the same thing. Gyroform enhancement, enhancement of the caudate and basal ganglia here, just showing us that we're dealing with an infarct. That's a little bit older because it usually takes a couple of days to, uh, to get that. By that point, a little bit later, probably a little bit of hemorrhage there in the frontal lobe adjacent to the infarct as well. So we have a couple of questions here. Your first question is, what should be your first study when you evaluate a stroke patient? You've got a couple of choices here. You've got CT head without contrast to look for stroke, CTA to look for the occlusion, CT without contrast to exclude hemorrhage, MR, or CT with contrast to look for stroke. Now the answer to this is to do a CT head with contrast, or without contrast rather, uh, you're doing that to exclude hemorrhage prior to therapy. If you're going to do some thrombolytics, you want to make sure there's not an underlying hemorrhage. Question 1B here, so your second question is, what intracranial artery supplies the largest vascular territory of the major cerebral arteries? So hopefully you know that from this case, this was a big infarct of the middle cerebral artery, which is the biggest area of, uh, of vascular perfusion in the cerebral hemispheres. Uh, so this was an ICA and MCA infarct. That's the biggest territory, so that's the one that's the most uh, problematic if you include it. Um, imaging ischemia, like usually we get a head CT first to exclude that there's a hemorrhage. They may get intravenous TPA if it's uh, relatively early. If it's a little bit later and there's a known large vessel occlusion, they'll often take these people for thrombectomy, so you can do that. Uh, MR, really, we do mostly later, uh, but if, you, if it's very early, you might do it to differentiate it if there's a wake-up stroke or something like that. You can do MRI pretty pretty early, but MRI is often a supplementary tool because of how much longer it takes to get it. Thanks for tuning in to this case number one. We're going to have six more cases. If you haven't seen the introductory videos, be sure to go back and check those out as well. Thanks for tuning in today. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel.